Hey friends, it's Jen at the Sunshine Farm. I want to take you on a tour of our permaculture orchard and food forest. And I just finished landscaping the front. Guys, this did not look so hot before, so <laughs> it was quite the feat. So I put in some um, hydrangeas and azaleas that I got on sale. Uh, I put in some bleeding hearts that my mother-in-law brought over from her house. And I'll add some other stuff to it as we go. But if you had seen this when we moved in, it was giant hedges. So I'm pretty proud of just re-landscaping it. So funny story. When we first moved into this 12 acre farm, my parents visited us. Um, they live out in California. So they came and visited us. And I remember my dad saying, why don't you plant some apple trees? And I was like, I don't really have any interest in planting apple trees. I didn't have any interest in planting any trees. And I remember him thinking, oh, all this space, what are you gonna do with it? And uh, I had no plans to do anything with it, sadly. I'm so glad my perspective and my heart changed on that because this orchard that I'll uh, walk you through wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. So I don't know exactly what happened, honestly, um, to change my heart from saying, no, I don't wanna plant an apple tree to I'm gonna plant 30 different kinds of fruit trees and uh, berry bushes, as well as have a huge garden. I can't tell you what happened, but uh, there was a sequence of events. I kind of got my feet wet and uh, by doing a few different things and saw other people doing things on YouTube and in real life and was really inspired and I fell in love with it, all of it. I fell in love with growing our own food and there's something especially exciting to me about having a food forest and orchard. So let us run away as fast as we can No looking back I'll hold your hand cause we're free to be all that we can be No one's stopping us but little tree right here is a Honeycrisp apple. Kind of boring to start with, but I just love a good Honeycrisp apple, so I wanted to make sure to plant one here in our orchard. Now I'm going to bring you over to one of our peach trees. We have three different peach trees. Two are the same variety, and then there's a different variety as well. So here we have a contender peach. These trees are hardy to our region. I actually purchased them from a company in Maine called Fedco Seeds. And I wanted to purchase from a company in the Northeast because I wanted to make sure that they knew what was really hardy for our region. I could have purchased from somewhere else and they could have shipped further, uh, but I really wanted a company that was closer to this region um, in upstate New York. So this here is another peach. This is pretty common one it is a red haven and in here we have this row kind of of wood chips that we put down and we have a bunch of different raspberry bushes and then we have another apple tree this right here is a Cortland apple I was really excited about varieties that were actually developed in our region like the Cortland apple um, Cortland is a town in New York and it's a variety that was developed here in New York. So I thought, what better way to add to our food forest than to add trees that were developed in New York. Um, some more raspberries in here. It's a beautiful evening. We woke up and it was gross and rainy uh, and it just turned into the prettiest day. So right here we have a cherry. This is a Stella, a sweet cherry. Cherries grow really well in New York, so I'm hoping that these do well too. And we have another apple tree right here. This is a Milden apple. I also wanted to make sure that I purchased varieties that um, were good pollinators for each other. For example, apple trees need pollinators of other apple trees that are blooming at the same time. So you can't just find two apple trees. You also have to think about, do these bloom early? Do they bloom mid-season? Do they bloom late season? So when I purchased our apple trees, I made sure to get different varieties that were also blooming at the same time. And so it was a bit complicated and I was doing a lot of taking notes and writing things down as I was going. 
over here, this tree has purple leaves right now, which like they're green purple, which I hope is normal. Um, <laughs> it's a Cocheco plum. I'm really excited about plums. They're so sweet. Oh, I just cannot wait for our first harvest, even though I know it might be a few years away. It's going to be so worth it. And then this over here is another cherry. This is called a Rainer, Rainier, Rainier sweet cherry. So looking forward to lots of cherries. They actually might be one of the first few things we harvest. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see about that. Now over here, this is a black ice plum and this tree actually blossomed this year and it was beautiful. So that was pretty exciting because none of the other trees um, blossomed at all. And after we planted the fruit trees, we decided we want to add, add on to the food forest. So um, I purchased some different berry bushes and fruiting shrubs to add around the trees. And then over the next few years, we're going to be adding all kinds of things. We're going to be adding really great ground cover like strawberries. We're going to be adding our herbaceous layer of perennial herbs. We'll add lots of pollinator friendly flowers and uh, all kinds of things. A great channel I recommend if you're interested in following somebody who has an amazing food forest in the Northeast in New Jersey is the gardening channel with James Prigioni. Uh, I, I love watching his videos. Every time he posts a new video, I get really excited. Right here, I believe this is a Saskatoon berry or a June berry. I could be wrong about that. I'll need to check. <laughs> and then over here, we have a pink lady apple tree. This tree was kind of a rebel purchase. Uh, it wasn't part of our initial order and we actually got it from a big box store because I love pink lady apples. So I really wanted to add one to our food forest. I don't really recommend buying trees on a whim from a big box store because it's really important to research things that do well in your region and are disease resistant because we're not gonna be spraying anything inorganic on these trees. Uh, so it's gonna be an organic food forest. And so it's really important to us that things just do naturally well. Next to this pink lady apple tree, I have two honeyberry bushes. I haven't heard of honeyberry before and I've never tried it. So I'll be curious to see what it tastes like, but they require pollinator of a different gender. So I have a male honeyberry and a female honeyberry. Now this little guy over here is a seckle pear tree. And next to the seckle pear tree, we have a rhubarb plant. I'll be adding a lot more of this stuff as we go, but um, because of budget and everything and time, these dogs are being crazy out here. <laughs> They're having so much fun. I don't let them out here with me in the food forest because I do not want them to run over a tree. These little guys are only a few years old and they're still not super strong yet. Uh, so I don't want my dogs to run over them. And then right here we have a Shinko pear tree. This is actually a current right here. This is another current bush right here. These two are currants. So when we were prepping the food forest, we realized that this hedgerow right here had some trees that were leaning a little too much and they made us nervous because we get heavy winds and if heavy winds came and the trees fell, we really didn't want them to fall in our orchard. We also didn't want them to shade out the orchard. So we thinned out this tree line just a little bit and that's why we have just these big piles of brush. Uh, we still need to find a time to and probably burn a lot of it because there's so much of it. Hazelnut tree right there. That's um, a sapling, so it's younger and it's growing better than anything else. They do really well in upstate New York. There's another one right there. We got three of them. I'm sorry it's so bright, but I'm not really sorry because I actually really appreciate some sun for a change. There's our last hazelnut right over there, right next to our horse pasture. When we planted these guys, um, we wanted to make sure we didn't plant too close to the horse pasture because we didn't want the horses to eat the fruit or the trees. So at first I was thinking, oh, it'll be easy to f figure out where we're gonna plant the trees, but it was a really wet spring. So we were trying to find areas that didn't get too boggy, which was actually really good. I'm really glad we planted at the wettest point of the season. It helped us get a sense of how 
bad the drainage could be. And also gave us an idea, some ideas about planting maybe some cranberries. As you know, cranberries love bogs. So we will want to plant some cranberries in part of our pasture that actually is wet for a lot of the spring and fall and winter. This tree behind me, that is a box elder tree. Funny story about the box elder trees. So I was convinced we were tapping silver maples and it wasn't until the trees started to bloom this spring where I realized those trees are not silver maples. And for a second, I didn't think they were maples at all. And I was really confused. But then I did uh, a little research and realized that the box elder, this guy, um, is maple. It's just a different kind and it doesn't have the typical maple leaf. It has like a three pronged leaf. So, you know, we tapped box elder trees. We made maple syrup, it tastes good. Okay, so this area over here is one of my little favorite little spots. So we have three different kinds of blueberries right over here. I'm in the way. <laughs> Those are the, all three of them. We have Blu-ray blueberry, Jersey blueberry, and Elizabeth blueberry. We have a Pioneer Cornelian cherry. And then I have another Pioneer Cornelian cherry right here. Oh right here and right here behind me are egyptian walking onions that somebody actually came over and gave me so that was pretty cool they connected with us through facebook or instagram or youtube i don't remember which one and she just wanted to bring me some walking onions and so these guys will actually walk so they'll i haven't seen it happen yet so they'll like set down their something and then they'll set off send off new onions so they're pretty cool and i love the idea of having perennial onions in the food forest when we got our trees we got bare root trees which means they send you the trees essentially in a box in our case it had moistened newspaper surrounding the roots but there's no soil around the roots um, and there are some real benefits to getting bare root trees one of them being they don't get root bound and they get used to your soil more quickly because they didn't come with soil. So uh, I know there's a lot of benefits to the bare root trees and I encourage you to research it because I'm not an expert, but it did seem like the best option for us. Okay, and here we need to mulch really badly. It just looks like a mess, but there are five blackberry blackberry shrubs that I thought were completely dead because they were not growing at all but they came back so that's good and they are Nelson blackberry another tree that we actually have a lot of in our food forest area are birch trees in the hedgerow and actually you can use the bark the inner bark of the birch tree to make a medicinal tea we have some wild grape also in the food forest right here what I wanted to show you was the blackberry so right there this plant is a wild blackberry and we have a lot of wild blackberry back here so you can see it in here so it has the little blossoms that are getting ready to open which should mean that we'll get some blackberries from these bushes. And we have wild blackberry all over our property. It grows like a weed. Um, the berries are really little, so I do wanna plant some more cultivated blackberry bushes and continue adding blackberry bushes to our food forest. But it's still food nonetheless, and we have zero input. And I just found it cool that it's already growing in our food forest way before we even decided this was going to be a food forest. This wild grapevine, guys, is insane. Look at this thing. This is it. And there are just grapes all over it. Let me show you. That's so cool. Wild grape is very tart. I don't eat them raw, but, ah, getting tangled in grapevines. But last year I did make some grape jelly with the wild grapes and it was amazing it was so good so tart and uh, I sweetened it so it was sweet too and I got it from our own backyard it was the most fun I've had 
I was at home by myself. Chris was somewhere doing something. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go forage for wild grapes. So I did it. I made jam or jelly with it. And we used it for a few months on toast in the morning for breakfast and um, on homemade Dutch baby pancakes. And it was the most rewarding feeling. And that was kind of the, the jump start to me wanting to do a food forest. Because basically making a food forest is... It's, it's similar to foraging, but you're facilitating it. So you're making a forest in your yard where you can forage for foods that you're intentionally planting. If you were to start a food forest, or if you have a food forest, what's the one thing you'd want to plant first? What would you be most excited about having in your food forest? Comment below and let me know. For me, I think it was apples because New York apples are amazing and probably peaches. I love peaches. Peaches are one of my favorite things. I want to take you over towards the garden area because we have three more plants that we will be moving to the food forest in just a little bit once we once we have a little bit more time. Also you can see this A-frame chicken coop that I actually made mostly by myself and it's working really well. So I have another video that I'll be editing and sharing soon about that. So I wanted to take you over here because we have our hardy kiwi plants. And so kiwi vines and produces a fruit that's almost similar to a large grape and is a hardy kiwi. It's different than your tropical kiwi plant, but the, the large grape tastes similar to a kiwi. It's a little tart, a little sweet, and I'm really excited to try it, you know, in a few years. <laughs> we have an Anna female kiwi, a Michigan State female kiwi, and a meter male kiwi. So for the hardy kiwis, you have to have a male pollinator for female plants. But they're really pretty. You can see they're already starting to like, almost want to vine out. I mentioned that we'll be adding to the food forest quite a bit. Um, and one ways we're adding is our herb layer. So I started a lot of herbs from seed, especially herbs that are perennial or self-seeding. I started echinacea, yarrow, chives, mint, chamomile, sage, and yeah, that's it. You can see the two horses in the background loving their life on this nice grass. I did want to share with you guys the cost for our food forest. The total cost of the trees and the blackberries and raspberries and kiwi was $747, which included about a $100 shipping fee. This was something that we knew would be an invest investment this year, and it was one that I wanted to make because fruit trees take so long to establish, um, and I knew that they would pay off in the long run. Now each year we'll add a few more different types of trees, and we'll probably spend a couple hundred dollars for the next few years investing in trees for our food forest and orchard. And in that $750 estimate, that didn't include the rhubarb or the Saskatoon berry or the honey berry or the currants, but those were only about $40. They were on sale and so it wasn't a huge expense. One thing I really want to add more than anything else to our food forest is papa trees. Really cool, kind of like a tropical fruit, but it's not obviously it grows here in the Northeast and it's almost like a custard-like fruit cross between a uh, mango and a banana or so I've heard. So I don't know, I've never tried it, but I really want to have it here in our food forest. So I actually have some seeds in the house that haven't quite germinated yet, but I will let you know when they do. What would you like to see us add to our food forest? I'd love to hear your suggestions in the comment below. Maybe you'll have some ideas that I haven't even thought of. Thanks for being here, friends, and I'll see you soon. Bye.